Welcome back to Green Thumb Gardening Secrets. Today we're going to talk about reasons to grow cover crops and the five super compelling reasons for just soil nutrients alone. Can't wait to get started. Let's get going. First, let's talk about what. Cover crops, as you see here, just like the name implies, cover the soil. They blanket the soil, to, they protect the soil. When the soil would otherwise be bare in areas of the garden where there aren't food crops or between widely spaced food crops. They're also in an acknowledgement that we can do better and there are, there's a better option than leaving our soil bare for six to nine months of the year. But why grow them? There are at least five fantastic reasons pertaining to just soil nutrients and all are super important for our gardens and farms. Number one, cover crops capture nutrients. Our water soluble nutrients like nitrogen, potassium, and calcium, especially nitrogen, leach down through the soil with water. They, they, being water soluble, they just filter right down in through the soil when it rains. And cover crops, especially grasses, and especially ones like winter rye, are outstanding at capturing those nutrients before they leach down into the soil and cover crops capture them, hold them in their tissues while they're growing, and then release them back to our plants when they decay. Winter rye actually, in some studies, has been found to capture 100% of the available nitrogen. Cover crops also produce nutrients. Let's go over here to look at some legumes. Here we have some clover, crimson clover, and here we have some alfalfa. Right here we have one of both right next to each other. Both of these are legumes. And as legumes, they have little nodules in their roots that house rhizobium bacteria. And rhizobium bacteria take nitrogen out of the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, but the nitrogen in our atmosphere is not in the form that plants can use. The rhizobium bacteria actually take through little pore spaces in the soil, get access to that nitrogen, from the atmosphere and fix it into a form that plants can use. So number two, produce nutrients. I'm here in some winter wheat, which also had some forage radishes, also called tillager radishes, that died out in the winter. And the winter wheat kind of came in and took its place. Those forage radishes have really long tap roots. And cover crops that have really long tap roots like forage radishes, alfalfa, and other deeply rooted cover crops go down deeper than our typical garden plant roots and they pull deeper nutrients up from uh, farther in the soil than our garden plants roots can reach. And then once they die, leave them in the area of the soil where our garden plants roots, roots can again reach them. Some, like buckwheat, actually have little acids that they secrete acids that dissolve certain soil macronutrients to, into a form that is readily usable for plants. Uh, mycorrhizal fungi do those same thing in combination with the roots of our of cover crops dissolve a lot of, of nutrients that are otherwise hard for our plants to use and put them into forms that are perfectly usable for our plants. So they make nutrients more available by getting them from deeper in the soil and from by putting them in forms that are more usable for our plants. Fourth reason. Fourth reason to add organic matter and fertility and from their live forms here to their dead forms here and all of their roots underneath, they add a large amount of organic matter to our soil, which is the core of soil health. Organic matter decays into the perfect nutrient balance for our plants. Each 1% of organic matter, for example, gets broken down by soil microbes to 20 to 40 pounds of nitrogen per year, each 1%. And it's a slow release of these nutrients in exactly the forms our plants need. It's not something that's dissolved and gone and flows away in the dissolution of a pellet. And cover crops are the next best way to add organic matter after using cured compost. Like the oats I have here that are now dead and decaying into the soil. Number five, cover crops provide homegrown mulch and compost material. All cover crops used to protect otherwise bare soil between our main crops can provide some mulch and compost material, but specific kinds like alfalfa and southern Sudan grass hybrids can be grown on a fraction of the garden during the main growing season to provide huge volumes of both. It's common, for example, to get three or four cuttings of alfalfa during the growing season, and southern Sudan grass hybrids are typically mowed when they reach three or four feet tall to spur the denser, deeper root systems that greatly improve our soil. 
cuttings from these two cover crops add tremendous volume to compost piles and, and provide them with a fantastic source of green, high nitrogen materials. For us, this practice has greatly increased the amount and quality of cured compost we produce. However, these fantastic cuttings can also be used as super nutrient-rich, weed-free mulch. Similarly, the dead and dried stalks from winter-killed covers like these winter-killed oats here can be left on the soil to decay while you plant amongst them, or raked off before you plant, set aside, and add it back to help cover the soil later. Either way, they provide an excellent source of homegrown mulch. And if you're planting a crop that provides its own mulch from its foliage, like bush beans and winter squash, you can remove the dried stalks for good and simply add them to the compost pile, providing a great source of brown, high carbon materials. If you have too much at one time, just pile them nearby to be safe for times like summer when the compost pile needs some layers of dried, high carbon materials to balance out the overwhelming amount of green, high nitrogen materials we all tend to get that time of the year. Either way, they're a great source of homegrown compost materials as well. And the homegrown nature of both means we know whether or not they're doused in chemicals that would be harmful to our main crops or filled with weed seeds that would become a headache. And most importantly, it means we're putting our garden to work and growing its own fertility. Well, that's it for this episode, but there are at least 15 other reasons that are all just as important for our gardens and farms. So stay tuned for upcoming episodes on cover crops' remarkable impacts on increasing water and air in our soil, weed disease and pest control, increasing production of our main crops, our peace of mind, and our pocketbook. And until next time, stay open to growing. You can find more on this topic and others on my website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Like this video if you liked it. It really helps us out. Leave questions or comments below. I personally answer each one and subscribe to get all of our future videos. And if social media is your jam, feel free to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for even more Green Thumb Gardening secrets, tricks, and tips, and just the tips. Leaves, they have almost, or they have really no insect damage. We've put nothing on them.